How do we test resistance and why would we? All right, so something that's a little bit less common out in the field is the use of the resistance setting on a multimeter or a tester. Right here, I've got a desktop uh, DMM digital multimeter, and then I've got a field tester. One thing to note about these two testers is that this tester is uh, thousandths of an ohm. So when it displays values, whereas this one might read 0.2 ohms, this one will read 200 ohms. So you have to understand the differences between different multimeters and when you get a reading, what it's actually calculating. So I put a couple of different things here that we can test so we can talk about maybe why you would use resistance, why it's useful, and not even necessarily just resistance, but continuity as well. So when you look at a multimeter, you have a symbol that is the ohm symbol or the omega symbol in the Greek alphabet that is talking about resistance values. This has different ranges, so it'll sense anything from you know thousandths of an ohm to a single ohm to 10 ohms, 100 ohms. It has a huge range of what it'll detect. So I like to use DMMs anytime I'm doing resistance because the amount of resistance that you're gonna offer in a filament of a light bulb is gonna be different than a fuse, which is also gonna be different than an entire roll of wire. At the end of the video, stick around because I'm gonna show you how you can actually use a multimeter to tell how much wire is on a reel without having to guess and like roll the whole thing out. So uh, first thing with the DMM, you gotta make sure that you're into the right settings. On here, it actually shows ohm. So the black one is always gonna stay where it's at. You notice on a DMM that you've got three reds and you have a black. So black always goes where it goes. If you're testing a lot of amperage, that's a 10 amp fuse that connects between here. Um, this is 500 milliamps. And then over here, it shows the ohm symbol. So it tells you what to do when you're using all these different crazy settings on here. So we're gonna go to the resistance setting. Now, uh, the first thing that we're gonna talk about is just a fuse. This thing has continuity to it. So from here through one lead to another lead and all the way back to the meter, it can detect if there's a loop. This is super helpful for us out in the field. A lot of times, if you don't know what wire is what, and you got a few wires sticking out at you, you can take a black and a white that are in the same one piece of Romex, strip them out and touch them together and put a wire nut, because on the other end, the black and the white should now, be because there's a, a wire nutted together, there should be a full loop from beginning to end. So you can use continuity and it should tone at you like this to tell you that there's a loop. So the continuity aspect of testing like this is really helpful. A lot of times out in the field, we will have a silly thing as a fuse that blows. So you might uh, have like a three phase environment. You've got a fused disconnect. Two of your fuses are fine, your third one's not. You have customers complaining that like sometimes there's lights, some of the lights and some of the receptacles in the building are working, but other things aren't. Could just be that you lost a phase at the utility, but a good thing to check if you get called out there is the fuses at the service disconnect. So the way that we test a fuse is one of these leads on each end. So we should get a tone that lets us know, hey, we got a good fuse. If there's no tone, that means, uh-oh, fuse is broken. A lot of times they're clear fuses like this one. So you can actually look in there to see and make sure that it's not broken. But the continuity aspect of this is huge. We use continuity all the time. Another way that you can use the continuity is to check to see if a light bulb is good or bad. Now this isn't gonna work on compact fluorescents or LEDs, um, anything that's like gas filled HID fixture lamps and stuff like that, where you have a gas uh, ignition on the inside, a gas tube, anything that you have a filament though that goes from one side to the other, piece of metal should ring continuity. So here's another thing you can take on the shell of a light bulb, cause that's your neutral side. And then you can take it on the bottom. Boom, we got a good filament in there. If there's no tone, you know this thing's bad. And sometimes you can tell by like shaking it a little bit. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes they just sound trashy and old, but they actually still ring through continuity wise. So that's another thing to do. Um, between the two, I wanna show you some values. So this will tone and it will show you actual values. You've probably seen this thing um, moving back and forth and it's telling us values. So this filament right here, that's telling me that it is 0.1 ohms, right? So that's the amount of resistance that it's offering to the amount of current that's flowing based off of the pressure, the EMF that we're pushing through, the difference of potential over a certain resistance is gonna allow a certain amount of current flow. So 
if you're ever sitting doing Ohm's law calculations, your resistance is variable. You can change resistance. The resistance in this tiny little filament is gonna be way different than say like the resistance of this element. So let's see what the resistance value of this light bulb shows. Look at that, 214.8 ohms. Notice that there's no ringing. There's no continuity. So to, the, to this multimeter, this doesn't look like a closed circuit. There's a lot of resistance. That's a big number. So there's so much resistance that it's kind of acting like an insulator somewhat compared to that, that filament. This thing, there's barely any resistance at all. Right, so this thing has a whole tiny little element that's wrapped around. Um, so to the to this multimeter, it's showing a lot of resistance. So that was in the 200 range. What about this thing? What does this show? It shows continuity. So my guess is it's going to be less because this thing thinks that it's just a, a piece of wire, with little resistance. Yeah, we got 16 ohms of resistance on it. So you can see the value, right? Like either you can use it for continuity when you're testing things and you're trying to see if something's broken or not or you can actually use the resistance values. Now, you're not gonna need to know the resistant values of a light bulb when you're out in the field, but you might have a heating element that's inside of an air handler or a furnace, and you don't know what size the element is, there's no sticker, it's not stamped on there, and you're like, damn it, I'm just trying to figure out like what size element is this? Well, if you get a resistance value, then you can figure out, because you know the applied voltage, now you know the resistance from what you're testing. So now you can do a calculation using Ohm's law to figure out the amperage, to know what wire size to run to the element. So that's a reason that we might do this out in the field. In that example, say that we have a 240 volt circuit that we know that we're gonna be supplying uh, some heating element in a furnace. So that furnace, we don't know what the actual KW rating is. There's no stickers that, you know, we can't, when we look at the element, there's nothing on there that marks it. So we have no idea how much current this thing's gonna draw. So if we can get a resistance value, cross that element with our multimeter, say we, we pull our multimeter out, we test and we get 5.77 ohms. Well, now we have two different values to figure out our third value. So we would use Ohm's law for that. We would plug in 5.77 for the resistance. We would plug in 240 for the voltage. We're trying to solve for I. So uh, I equals E over R. I is your current, 240 volts is your voltage, and 5.77 is your resistance, 41.5. So we can say that the current is 41. Point, we'll say six amps. So we know 41.6 amps. Okay, so I don't even know what KW rating this thing is, but I know with whatever the resistance of these elements are that they're gonna draw 41.6 amps because of the resistance on them. You could even go one step further and we could figure out what KW rating that is. So instead of using Ohm's law, we're using Joule's law for power. So if we're trying to find power, we multiply current times voltage. So it's 240 times 41.6, 9,984. That is a 10 kW heating element that's gonna draw 41.6 amps. Another thing that you can try to figure out is a lot of um, resistance that you get on light bulbs. If you know that you've got like a fixture and you can't get to the bulb and it's like way up and you don't have a bucket truck with you, you can figure out what the wattage of a bulb is. So any kind, any like little bit of information that you can pull off of things, you can plug into Ohm's law or into the power wheel and move those things around to get your unknowns to the things that you don't know. So um, last thing that I use this for, and I just always thought this was cool. Some old school electrician showed me this a long time ago. Every bit of wire in the back of the National Electrical Code, chapter nine, table eight, shows a certain amount of resistance that's based off of the size of the conductor. So down the left, you've got all these different conductor sizes. Every single conductor is gonna have a certain amount of resistance to it when you pass current through it. It's gonna be different if it's aluminum, it's gonna be different if it's copper, but it's in thousands of feet. So if I'm looking at a uncoated copper conductor or a coated copper conductor, I have different values to go off of. So what I'm gonna show you is that if you go to uncoated under copper and you go to ohms per KFT, which is thousands of feet. So if you look at the fourth column from the left, it says quantity, shows one and seven. Well, one means one conductor, that's a solid conductor. Seven means stranded, because there's seven stranded conductors in that number 12. Go down to number 12, so you can see those two different values. They're pretty close. When you go to uncoated uh, ohms per thousand feet, it shows that a number 12 stranded is 1.98 ohms per thousand feet. 
Okay, so we know what a thousand feet should show up on a multimeter if we're reading it. So what do you think is gonna happen when we have a 500 foot roll, brand new, of number 12 stranded? Well, if we know a thousand feet is two ohms, we should roughly get one ohm if it's 500 feet. So let's see what we got. Zero point nine. So that goes to show you if you've ever got a reel of this and it, there's like half as much on it, and you're at the shop and you're like, man, I've got like a, I've got like a 75 foot run. I can't tell if that's a hundred feet or not. Dude, pull out your multimeter. Go. Know that it's two ohms per thousand feet and then just do the math and walk it backwards to figure out how long the wire is. So that's a cool trick. So that is using resistance, testing for resistance. I would be a little careful um, using different testers, especially using a tester, not a digital multimeter. Usually digital multimeters, you get a little bit higher range. Some of them are auto ranging, so it'll give you, it'll move the decimal around for you. Uh, whereas this thing's not, this thing's really just a, meant to be a voltage and amperage tester and give you some continuity. So uh, having it in thousands of ohms is a little bit less helpful, but it's specifically meant for voltages, for resistances and for amperages that you're gonna run into as an electrician most of the time in like 120, uh, 240, 480 volt environments. Um, but if you want something a little bit more sensitivity, I would go with a DMM like this that's got a lot of uh, different range. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, leave some comments below if you got some comments. I'll see you guys in the next one.